As it has already become a tradition, it's December, and in December we talk about DOS. In this video, we'll talk about one of my favorite topics, that is file managers. Let's start with a bit of history. Version 1.0 of DOS, released in 1981 with the IBM PC, was heavily inspired by the CPM operating system of the 70s, thus it didn't have the concept of directories. This is also the reason why the prompt of all the DOS versions showed only the drive letter immediately followed by the greater than sign. At the time, it was common for a PC to have only one or two floppy drives and no hard disk. As a result, the simple dir command together with the other base DOS commands were more than enough to manage the files on the floppies. But the situation rapidly changes, and here's in 1983 the 2.0 release of MS-DOS, which brings two new important features. It supports directories and subdirectories, and it supports hard disks. Also in 1983, Jeffrey Johnson gets hired by Executive Systems. Executive Systems was a software house that initially wrote a lot of software commissioned by Epson. Because of the several commissioned software, the number of files and directories scattered through the many floppies and hard disks of the executive systems started to become unmanageable. Moreover, at the time, there didn't exist any software capable of managing files on multiple directories. Here's then Jeffrey Johnson, who, together with his colleagues at Executive Systems, creates X3, whose 1.0 version, that consists in a single executable file of around 34K, gets released on April 1st, 1985, at the West Coast Computer Fair in San Francisco. As you can see, it's a black and white software, where the panel on the upper left shows the directory tree. Now, I'd like to stop a second to think about this. The fact that we have the directory displayed graphically as a tree is an innovation that was born right here, in the 1.0 version of X3, and then it has been copied by all other file managers continuing to this day. Under the directory tree, there's the listing of the files contained in the selected directory. The panels on the right, on the other hand, show some statistics which we don't cover about at the moment. The lower part of the screen, on the other hand, is the most useful, as it shows us which key corresponds to which possible action. Given that you only need a single key press to execute any action, and you have a graphical representation of files and directories, here's a tool that is very powerful and easy to use, especially considering that we are in 1985. However, as we are in 1985, there are two aspects that I don't like in this version of X3. The first one is that it logs the content of the entire disk, and, as we are on DOS, we are limited by 640k of RAM, and as a consequence, if you have a lot of files on the disk, X3 could not even start because it consumed all the memory. The second one is that some keys have not been standardized yet, and I'm referring to computing in general. For example, today it's normal to expect that if you press F1 key, it corresponds to help. Indeed, if you press 1 on X3, you quit. So what's the key for help then? Well, it's F2, of course. Or, if I'm viewing a file to exit the viewer, I expect it to press ESC or Q, as in quit, you know. Instead, it's ENTER. The ENTER key in ancient times was also known as RETURN, so in this case, it makes sense to press the RETURN key to return to X3. I could go on, but I think I made myself clear. Now, let's go back one year. In 1984, John Socha, at the time student at the Cornell University, starts working on a project that he called Visual DOS. After graduating, John Socha gets hired by Peter Norton, and his Visual DOS gets renamed to Norton Commander, whose first version will be released in 1986. As you can see, version 1.0 of Norton Commander already has the classic two-panel appearance with the function key captions in the lower part of the screen. The only difference compared to its next versions and its clones is that the two panels are tall only half of the screen, thus giving more visibility to the output of the commands. 
I find the two-panel layout fantastic, because many file operations require a source and a destination, and the two panels are perfect for such operations. The function keys are the same ones that we use today on Midnight Commander or my own RNR. If we are reviewing a file, the ESC key quits rightfully from the viewer. And moreover, Norton Commander also has an integrated text editor. Let me remind you that we are in 1986, the current DOS version is a 3.2 and the DOS will not have a decent editor until DOS 5 in 1991. Right, DOS 5 in 1991. Microsoft, in this DOS version, makes a miserable attempt at a file manager with DOS shell. But the slowness of the shell and its inconvenience, especially when compared to the single keystroke operation of X3 or the panels of Norton Commander, resulted in the shell being only a little failed footnote in only two DOS versions, specifically 4 and 5. Truth to be told, the main reason for Microsoft abandoning the shell was due to Microsoft focusing more on Windows, which they considered the true visual interface for DOS. But let's get back to the topic. I was saying that both X3 and Norton Commander had a huge success, and both got updated and had many new features implemented over the years. X3 changed its name first in X3 Pro, then in X3 Pro Gold, and lastly in X3 Gold, whose last version is 3.01 from 1993. Norton Commander didn't change its name, but it has simply increased its version number. The last version of Norton Commander is 5.51 from 1998. Both file managers have a troubled history that I'm not going to talk about in detail, but I'm giving you a couple of links in the description if you are interested. However, I'm going to take a look at the last DOS versions both of X3 Gold and Norton Commander. Let's start with X3 Gold. As you can see, it has a pretty colored interface. This time, instead of logging all the files on the disks, it logs only the ones relative to the current directory. This has two advantages. The first one is that it's faster on startup. The second one is that it allows you to work on hard disks that have thousands of files on several directories. Let's not forget that we're limited by 640k of RAM, so logging only the directories that we're interested in is a good method for not consuming RAM needlessly. The program got bigger also in dimensions, and in fact a complete X3 Gold install weighs about 3 megabytes. In these 30 megabytes, many interesting, at least for the time, features have been implemented. We have a text editor a tool for viewing differences between files called JFC, which we can consider a precursor to MELD. We also have viewers for various file types, most of which are now obsolete, such as Lotus123 or WordPerfect. In this case, we are viewing a PCX image. Other than viewing many file types, X3 Gold also supports compressed archive files in the zip format. So we can open, for, the, for example, this file, which is the demo of the Aladdin video game, and we can take a look at the archive contents without necessarily extracting it. Of course, we can also extract the whole archive, or only some of its files. It is also possible to tag all the files that we are interested in and create a zip archive. Unfortunately, I can't show you these features, as the 86box emulator that I'm using for this video doesn't accept the Ctrl F5 key combination. Next, another nice feature of X3 Gold is that with the F8 key you activate the two-panel mode, so that you can simplify copying and moving files, as you're working in a similar manner as Norton Commander, where on one panel you select the source, and on the other panel you go to the destination. One last good feature of X3 Gold is that finally keys make a logical sense. F1 is the key for help. ESC cancels and quits from the viewers. Q quits the program. So, X3 Gold was a really complete and quick to use file manager. Let's now look at Norton Commander 5.51. 
Unlike X3 Gold, here the interface hasn't changed much since Norton Commander 1.0. We have the two panels that extend for the whole screen height, but in reality this was already done in version 2.0 of Norton Commander, and apart from that there are not many differences. Considering that a competing install of Norton Commander 5.51 weighs about 5 MB, what does it offer more than its 1.0 version that weighs 60 times less? Let's start by saying that version 1.0 of Norton Commander didn't support recursing into directories, which means that you couldn't copy directories from one place to the other and you couldn't delete non-empty directories. With Norton Commander version 5.51, you can easily perform both operations. As with X3 Gold, now also Norton Commander has file viewers, and also in this case it doesn't have any problem displaying the PCX image. Now also Norton Commander can open compressed zip archives, as if they were normal directories, so we can view files inside the archive without extracting them, or we can extract the files from the archive by simply copying them in the destination directory. That's all then! Essentially yes, and this does not justify at all the fact that this version of Norton Commander is this heavy. Other than being heavy in the sense that it weighs 5 MB, it's heavy also in the fact that some operations start to feel unresponsive. So as you can see, the concept of bloatware is far from recent. But let's take a step back in time for a bit. 1992. Version 1, 2 and 3 of Norton Commander are incredibly popular, especially in Eastern Europe. Zvolod Volkov, I hope I pronounced it correctly, at the time student at the Kiev University, writes his Norton Commander clone called Volkov Commander and releases its first as freeware, then as shareware and finally as freeware again. The oldest version that I could find is 4.0.020 Alpha from 1992. I don't know if there have been releases prior. Well, this version already has all the features that you expect from a Norton Commander style file manager, including being able to copy directories recursively and delete directories recursively, operations that were not possible in contemporary versions of Norton Commander. All this in a single executable file of about 40k. Given it being lightweight and the fact that it was distributed for free, Volkov Commander had a certain degree of success, especially in Eastern Europe. The last version of Volkov Commander is 4.99.28 Alpha released in 2000. Also this version is very lightweight. The whole distribution with all the documentation weighs only 176k. This means that you can put Volkov Commander in a single 360k floppy and you still have half of the floppy available. An important new feature of this version compared to the previous ones is its support for compressed archives, provided that the pkm zip command is in the path. Of course, given it being lightweight, it doesn't have any particular file viewer, so our PCX image gets viewed as a simple binary file. You can't have it all. Personally, I find this version of Volcom Commander excellent. It's very lightweight, it works well, and it supports compressed archives. I was impressed on how well it works even on an old Olivetti M24, despite the fact that it's a software written in 2000. Ok, and regarding X3 Gold, is there a freeware or shareware clone of it? Well, yes, it exists, but it's not my cup of tea. Between 1995 and 1997, two German guys named Martin Amersberg and Michael Weber, sorry for the pronunciation, wrote a freeware clone of X3 Gold named Failmaster. The problem is that between 1995 and 1997, nobody cared about DOS anymore, so I didn't find many information about it. The only version that I found is 3.1 from 1997. And yes, on the surface it reminds of its X3 Gold, but I find it slow, heavy and unresponsive. Now, of course, if you try FileMaster on a modern PC using DOSBox, you don't notice it. But on a 20 MHz 386 SX emulated by 86 box, you bet that you notice if a problem is responsive or not. 
Despite the wake thing about uh, uh, 2.2 megabytes, so it's too big to fit on a 144 meg floppy, it only has a fraction of the features of FS Gold. It doesn't support the two panel layout, it doesn't have the many file viewers, and its compressed archive support leaves to be desired. I wanted to show it to you just for completeness sake. Concluding, with X3 we saw a huge evolution, and X3 Gold version 3.01 is undoubtedly the most complete DOS file manager, I can't recommend it enough. Norton Commander started very well, but then, after each version, it has become too heavy without bringing new features that justify its weight. Good thing that when the Norton Commander started to become heavy, it emerged, almost from nothing, Volkov Commander, which continues to have all the useful features from Norton Commander, but being really lightweight. Of course, these are not the only file managers available for DOS but for sure, they are the most important from a historical point of view. Thanks for watching. You can find this video both on YouTube and on Odyssey. You can find all the links in the description. Please like and comment this video. I would tell you to subscribe to my channel, but almost all my videos are in Italian. Nevertheless, if you understand Italian and you like Linux, programming and retrocomputing, subscribe to my channel as well. See you in the next video.